The recently introduced Performance Enhancement application Auto FPS has now received a significant update. If you're not familiar with this application, check out my previous video, link in the notes below. This is a sim hanger, my name's Mark, welcome aboard and let's get started. If you want to get your hands on this application, link in the notes below, or if you've already got it installed, you can get it in-app. This will take you to the developer's GitHub page, where you can download and install the Microsoft Flight Simulator Auto FPS Installer version 0.4.2. If you've already got the application installed, this will update it. And the install is subject to the parameters as defined in my previous video. It's quick, simple, and it's done. As before, I recommend you disable auto start. So what's new in this application? Well, quite a few things actually. Improved monitoring and targeting of the actual FPS being achieved has allowed for smaller adjustments to the LOD values, providing a smoother experience overall. It now provides two different modes, VFR and IFR, to suit your particular style of flying, and it changes the app priorities between FPS and texture level of detail, subject to the flight type selected. But most importantly and significantly, it now features an auto-target FPS function. This means the application will overwrite any target that you've set and attempt to determine its own and then automatically adjust your level of detail based on the FPS that you're actually achieving. So if you don't want the hassle of setting your own target FPS, and you don't want the hassle of using the expert options, well, install the app, tick the auto target FPS, and it does the rest. In addition, it now displays the particular mode that you're in. In this example, I'm in PC mode on the monitor, there's also frame generation mode, FG mode, if you're using frame generation. And last and not least, VR mode. It automatically detects which mode you're in and stores the settings for each mode for future use. So let's select auto target FPS. Note the targeted FPS that I put in has now been overwritten with auto. And note the FPS is counting down while it settles. To prevent unnecessary changing in the settings, allows a short period to establish stability. At the current settings, my actual FPS is 66, but it's set a stable 62, and will attempt to maintain that FPS by adjusting the texture level of detail or the clouds, as per the previous application. When you select Auto Target FPS, it will by default use the following parameters. Points to note is that it will automatically enable the object level of detail option, as well as a new parameter called texture level of detail minimum plus, which we'll have a look at just now. So what is the difference between the VFR and IFR flight types? Broadly speaking, VFR is designed for GA aircraft and IFR for airliners. But of course, that's a personal preference. IFR works very much the same as defined in my previous and earlier referred to video. And when using expert settings, the texture level of detail below the specified altitude will be set to the minimum chosen. In VFR flight, where generally we're flying lower to the ground, and to prevent multiple changes of the texture level of detail in quick succession, the texture level of detail is locked at whatever it may be as soon as you are at 100 feet or below, regardless of the FPS value. Turning now to the expert options, a number of new parameters are available. Here you will see a TLOD min and a plus with a checkbox, and this function is available for both IFR and VFR modes. Quick look at IFR. So what happens when we select the checkbox? This is effectively a buffer. And it allows the program, if there's enough FPS headroom, to add 50 to the texture level of detail, rather than just maintain it at the minimum, when your system could do more. Perhaps at one airport you've got no headroom, so it would leave it at 50, which is the minimum. But perhaps at another airport, there's far less traffic, etc. And you'd like the benefit of greater textures and more detail. And note you have very much the same functionality for cloud recovery texture level of detail. And once again, it's just a checkbox that you can tick or leave unchecked. 
Well, I'm just sat on the ground here at JFK in PMDG's DC6. But let's have a look at a few examples. If you want a more detailed example, please refer to my earlier video in the Fly-by-Wire A320. We've taken auto target FPS off. I've put my targeted FPS down to 45 to make up for lots of headroom. I'm in IFR and the texture level of detail is 100, which is the 50 that I've set, plus the 50 buffer. If there wasn't enough FPS buffer, then it would have been less. I've now enabled the auto object level of detail. Adding this to the mix has once again reduced the texture level of detail down to 80. But note if using object level of detail, the minimum and maximums are set by altitude and not by your FPS. Higher level of detail at ground level and less at altitude. I'm going to leave mine unchecked. When unchecked and not on auto FPS, it's using my InSim settings. I've now changed the weather to fully overcast. Switch my flight type to VFR. Think I'll also tick the cloud recovery box, cloud recovery plus, and note it's now waiting for it to stabilize. It's counting down. In this case, it was 20 seconds. We're nearly done now. There's plenty of headroom, so it should be pretty much happy at 100. We can do another quick test. Let's turn off the expert options and allow it to auto target FPS. Once again, it starts its countdown. It's now looking for a stable FPS. Countdown's finished and it's set it at 55 FPS. Texture level of details gone back up to 100. There's quite a bit more detail regarding this update and a full breakdown can be found via a link on the developer's GitHub page, which as mentioned is linked below, which includes a restoration of Microsoft Flight Simulator settings in the event of a crash to desktop. If you have the third party application GPU Z loaded, the app can also display the load on your GPU, as well as a number of suggestions and recommendations, such as if you're using VSync, set your targeted FPS a little bit below the figure you've chosen. In this video, I've only really focused on the changes. This update by providing the auto FPS function makes it a no brainer and quick and easy to set and gain the benefit of a smoother flight if you need it. Plus, if using the expert settings, you're not restricted to your minimum LOD if you've got an FPS overhead, resulting in improved graphics, particularly useful for those who fly VFR. A great addition to the sim. As always, thank you very much for being with me today. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon. And ciao for now.